We're jumping once again back into solving quadratic equations, and one great way to be able to solve quadratic equations is to be able to use the zero product property upon an expression that is factored, but of course when it's factored you want it to equal zero to be able to use the zero product property. So I'm um, jumping down to this first example right here, um, we're asked to solve the particular equation, you can see that on the left hand side you have a factored expression, um, and then it's equal to zero, which does tell us us, right, that by the zero product property, that if we do multiply two different things and it equals zero, then at least one of those two things has to be equal to zero. So um, that means, of course, then 2x plus 3 itself has to be equal to zero, or it also might be the case that x minus 8 might have to be equal to zero. So with the blue condition right there, if you solve that equation, you're going to have to subtract 3 from both sides and then divide by 2. So you end up getting that x could be a negative 3 halves as a possible solution to that equation. And then when you add 8 to both sides of this other red equation right here, you could also get positive 8 as being a solution to the equation. So it does turn out that those two would be the solutions to that particular quadratic equation that's already kind of nicely in a factored form. Um, basically the same thing is going on right here, that you have the product really of this blue factor right here with this red factor right here, and when you multiply the blue and the red, it equals zero. So clearly either the blue has to be zero or the red has to be zero. So if the blue has to be zero, if two times something has to be zero, then of course x itself has to be zero when you divide by two on both sides there. Um, and then also it could be the case that 7x minus 4 is equal to zero. So if you first add 4 to both sides, then you get that 7x is equal to 4, and then divide by 7, then the fraction 4 sevens could also be a possible value for x. So we end up getting those two particular solutions to that equation that you see there. Um, and then finally, right here, you can see another completely factored expression on the left-hand side. It's equal to 0. Um, but there really are kind of actually three different factors, because you have like this blue factor, the 3x plus 1 factor, this red factor, the 29 minus 6x. But then you also have like this green factor right here of a 4. But um, that 4 is really not going to be useful to like actually solve for a value of x, because there's no value of x involved right there. So we can kind of really just ignore it. It's, it's not really relevant. Um, but clearly, either the blue or the red has to be zero for all three of the green and blue and red to multiply and equal zero. So for 3x plus 1 then to be equal to zero, then if you subtract 1 and then divide by 3 on both sides, you end up getting negative 1 third as a possible value for x. And then for the red expression, if 29 minus 6x is equal to zero, so if you like add 6x to both sides and then you um, divide by 6 on both sides, then you end up getting that x could possibly be pos um, positive 29 6 right there. So those two are going to be your possible values for x in that particular equation that you see there. All right, so now um, jumping to um, some of these examples down here, we're asked to find the solutions to each equation. Um, and you can see that we do have a quadratic equation because the highest exponent on x there is a 2. Um, so what we'll want to try to do is try to hopefully factor this expression on the right-hand side of the equation there because then we could use the zero product property. Um, now first thing is first though maybe before I kind of actually write that is we should check for a GCF. So whether or not there is a common factor of all of those and 3, 5, and 2 are only divisible by 1 and they also don't all have variables. So there is no GCF so we might just try doing like a guess and check to see how we could factor this. So clearly 3x squared is going to be the result of 3x times x. So that's kind of our only option there. Also that's a 2 and the only way we can get a 2 is a 2 times a 1. Um, so it's just kind of a matter of figuring out where the 2 and the 1 are going to go. Um, we can tell that the signs should be both minuses because we need a positive 2 but a negative interior. So at least that's helpful. Um, so if the 2 goes there and the 1 goes there, we end up getting minus 6x and minus 1x, which would be negative 7x in the middle. So we don't want that. So maybe we put the 2 there and the 1 there. Then you get minus 3x and minus 2x, which would be minus 5x in the middle. So it turns out that I think we've correctly factored that quadratic expression that's on the right side there. So then we can use the zero product property now, right? Because if this factor multiplies with this, this factor to equal zero, then either 3x minus 2 needs to be zero then, or x minus 1 needs to be zero then. So in that first equation, if you add 2 and then divide by 3, we get positive 2 thirds as a possible value for x. And then if you add 1 for this equation on both sides, 
and you get positive one as a possible solution. So um, it does turn out that both of those values would satisfy the original equation. So if you want to plug it back in for x and in that and check it, you can. But it certainly will turn out that these two here are going to be the valid solutions for that particular equation. Um, jumping to this fellow right here, you can see that you've got a factored expression. However, it equals 11, right? And we can only use the zero product property when the equation is set equal to zero. So we're going to have to um, expand that out and then get the 11 over the other on that side and then set it equal to zero. So if we foil this out, um, you're going to get 10n squared um, and then plus 5n and plus 6n would be plus 11n. Oh, I don't have the squared there. Okay, 10n squared plus 11n, and then 3 times 1 is plus 3. Okay, so now that's equal to the 11 that we see on the other side. So we're going to want to subtract 11 to both sides so that we get a 0 on that uh, right-hand side. So then when you subtract 11, you get a negative 8 there, and then that's equal to 0. So now we want to try to factor that left-hand side of the equation. There is no GCF, so um, it's just really kind of a matter of guess and check. So we have a lot more options now because the 10 could be 10 times 1 or 5 times 2, and then the 8 could be 4 times 2 and 8 times 1, so it's really going to be, um, might take you a little bit of time to try to figure this out. So we might try 5n times 2n first to see what we might get out of that first of all, and then... Um, I believe if we do 8 and 1, because if you put a 1 here, you're going to get 5n out of that, which means if you put the 8 here, you're going to get 16n out of that, which you can get 16 and 5 to make an 11 if you make the 16 positive and the 5 negative. So if you want to make the 5 negative, then you're going to have to make that 1 negative and make this positive, which is okay, because you also want that to be a negative 8 right there. So it turns out that that would be the correct way to get that factored. So now if we have this multiplies with that and equals 0, then either the 5n plus 8 has to be 0, of course, or the 2n minus 1 has to be 0. So if you solve for n in both of those two pink equations, then you end up getting negative 8 fifths or positive 1 half as your solutions for the variable n in that particular original equation then. And then with this example that you see here, um, we'll want to check for a GCF first, and it turns out that in this example there will be a GCF. I believe it is the number 2 only. So then we'll end up with 2w squared minus 15w minus 8 as that other factor. Um, so this right here is still quadratic, so we're going to want to try to break that quadratic factor down if we can. So this is still going to equal 2 times. So um, to get the 2w squared, it'll have to be 2w times w. And then, um, yeah, then it's just kind of guessing and checking from there. So I think if we make this a minus 8, because what that will do is give you a negative 16w, and then this has to be a plus 1, so that you get a subtraction of 8, but then that's going to be a plus 1w, so that these two things will combine to equal that middle negative 15w, then that gives you the correct factored form of that. So still equals 0. So now, just erasing some of this work right here, now we know that um, either this factor or this factor either has to be 0, right? This 2 is irrelevant because there is no w value there to solve for. So it's just 2w plus 1 might equal 0, or w minus 8 has to be equal to 0. So we're going to get negative 1 half equal to w out of that first equation when you solve, or you're going to get that w equals positive 8 out of that second equation when you solve there.